Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to Linux Quest. Today we're going to take a look at another in the ongoing series of Backslash Linux. Stay tuned. Developer Lucifer Conrad Reeves has continued to work on his Backslash Linux series, and so now there's a new beta release of Backslash Kristoff. Now, I've been running this for four or five days, and for a beta release, it's not been bad. There's also a pretty long change log here, and I'm not going to cover everything, but I will put the link to this page in the video notes. There's a new Backslash Shell version 2.0, as well as a new sidebar. Root actions have been put in place here within the Dolphin File Manager, which is great to see. But there's also fingerprint support for locking the screen, unlocking terminal, and other apps. Nice to see that. There's a new CoverFlow Alt Tab Switcher, which we'll take a look at. Out of the box support for snaps, which we're seeing a lot lately in Linux. New uh, UI in place, updated Plasma Shell. Yes, this is KDE Desktop. Wine is included. This is version 2.14 as well as the graphical front end. There's a new email client. We'll talk about that. An app called Exposé, as well as Redshift, your nightlight support to keep you from uh, or to help you fall asleep after a long night of watching your computer monitor. Also, Microsoft fonts have been included, and I do appreciate that. There's a backup utility as well as the addition of the new music player, Google's Music Player, the Desktop Edition and performance improvements. All right, let's jump over here and take a look at things. So at first glance, it may be hard to tell that this is KDE. You've got a Latte Doc set up here at the bottom with kind of a Mac-ish icon theme here. If you right click, you do have a live desktop environment. And that's where you start to see some of the KDE side pop through. Now up top here, let's take a quick look at the panel. This is the side panel, okay. User error here. We're going to turn off set flexible size and you'll see that panel fill all the way over to the right as it should. Now there's an update here, seven packages, and I left this in place so that you could see that this is part of what you can see in the side panel. Now if we go to audio controls, you'll see those controls in place as well. Straightforward, easy to access and understand. So I really like seeing that set up. Let's take a quick look over here at what I call the simple menu and you'll see that that's just your standard KDE drop-down menu. But if we come down here to the bottom, we've got a lot more options. So you've got the full screen dashboard here where you can simply scroll from page to page or quickly search. So if you're into that full screen dashboard, there you go. And then also we've got Exposé in place so you could quickly launch into any running applications. And then, of course, Alt-Tab was included and works very well. Now, there's more here than meets the eye. you got the inclusion of a nice calendar. Very clean UI in, in most regards. And we're going to skip over some of these applications and categories here. We'll skip development and education, but under games, you're going to see that Play on Linux is set up. Under graphics, you've got Image Magic and Shotwell in place. Chromium was your default browser. And then let's just talk about Mel here. And this one is kind of puzzling to me because this is actually Nihilus Mel. And for those of you who follow Linux News, I believe that Nihilus Mel is no more. Under multimedia, you're going to see the Google Play Music. And that's essentially going to launch into what looks like um, a, a web, well, I didn't mean to minimize it, a web browser and allow you to set up and log in. But once you have launched that, actually, we're going to close that because you see what happens here as you launch some apps, you see the menu pop up. And I think that's part of the beta showing through. So if we launch back in, we'll close that out. And now you'll see that pop back up. And I've noticed that on a couple of apps where you'll actually get a menu over here on the left and everything on the right disappears. I'm sure that'll be cleaned up before final release. Uh, but now that we have launched the Google Music app, you'll see the controls here up top. 
All right, we'll keep moving. Uh, under multimedia, you'll also see that Kodi Media Center was set up in place and VLC. I installed Kden Live and VocoScreen. We'll skip over Office here because it's your typical LibreOffice. And then we'll move to Settings. And here are a few other apps that I've really uh, liked seeing in place. One is Backups. Now, I haven't made an actual backup yet, but from what I can tell, this looks very simple and straightforward. We'll keep moving over here to Cavantum Manager, and this was brand new to me, and this is one I think I'll spend some time with. If you're into theming and tweaking your system, this looks like you could either get into trouble or, or really tweak out an extremely nice custom theme. You've got everything here from transparency settings. These are all hacks under the category hacks. Uh, iconless menus, a single top toolbar. Uh, you've got a compositing and general look tab with lots of options. Uh, size and delays. And then under miscellaneous, lots of options here. Again, I think this is something you could spend some time with. Uh, tweak this thing out and save your own theme. Software Updates, Synaptic Package Manager, and System Settings. I'm not going to take a look at all the settings and everything in this review uh, because it, it again is KDE and I've got other videos on the KDE settings. I will say that if you're not a fan of Discover, which we'll take a quick look at, Synaptic Package Manager is in place. And speaking of Discover, we'll go ahead and launch into that. This is your graphical fun front end for accessing software as well as any updates. I think this still needs some work and refinement, but for the most part, it does what it needs to these days. Let's move on down to utilities. Here we saw we see Exposé again, which we took a look at. Here are your Latte Doc settings, and here's one Maps. Typically, you don't see maps set up and in place in KDE. And going back to utilities, this one I really like, System Optimizer. And it looks like it's called Stacer. Now, I'm not familiar with this. I've never used it. But it's very easy and quick to go from category to category. So we could start out here with the dashboard. You're going to see high CPU usage because I'm recording now. Quick glance at memory, disk space. And from here you'll also see that there are updates. Then there's a system cleaner. You could do a system scan. See a report of that. Startup apps. Here we'll see Latte Doc and two zeros. Not sure what they are. And next tab is services. So here you could see everything that's running as a service and toggle that on or off which is very nice and last but not least there's an uninstaller to quickly uninstall packages so Stacer is I think very nice and I'm happy to see that included here make sure I didn't miss anything uh, here's a gallery I'm not familiar with have to look at that later. Now because this is KDE it's very configurable so you don't miss any of that within this desktop. We can go to set flexible size or panel options and from there we could add widgets, add additional panels, and change the panel settings. You can go left, center, right with the panel alignment, change the visibility, or here again you could change the height you can get crazy with it <laughs> or the screen edge you could simply drag that over left or right bottom or top looks like I've changed things up a little bit too much but we'll stretch that right back over and get that set up now, KDE is one of those desktop environments, if you're not familiar with it, that is highly configurable. You can spend hours uh, tweaking and changing things. So I'm not going to go through all those settings. Again, I do have other videos, but I do want to point out, you know, with like the theming and everything that's in place here, it's nicely done. 
it does look different from your default KDE look that you typically see and with the addition of the side panel and things like that. The Dolphin File Manager is one aspect of KDE that I love. I'm a huge fan of the Dolphin File Manager because again you can configure everything, uh, icon size, all the settings, but there are awesome, also some additions here that are worth mention in this particular beta release which is root actions is in place and then you've also got move to trash which is already set up for you so nice to see you can actually go down here to ownership to root move rename copy so way to go there overall this is a beta that I've enjoyed taking a look at and if you're into KDE I think this is something maybe you would want to follow because it is a little different and there are some things that are set up that may make this a good distribution option for you. Now I think this is Ubuntu based. The installer was uh, the Kubuntu installer. Had no issues there and so look forward to the final release and thank you Lucifer Conrad Reeves for your work on this distribution. That's it for now and we will check you later.